So this is probably going to be the last of our uh, Japanese series in fermentation just for a bit, but... Mm. Oh, it smells so good now. Okay, so we had a vlog of me going to get the ingredients for the Nukazuke before. So if you didn't watch that, please go and watch it. It was actually quite interesting and informative. Uh, so these are Japanese style, we're making Nukazuke today, and these are Japanese essentially like pickled vegetables. But the way that you pickle them is quite unique because uh, you pickle them in a bed of rice bran. A quick thing if you didn't watch the vlog is that uh, if you don't have rice bran, people have substituted for wheat bran. Today we are going to do it a majority with oat bran and that seems to work pretty well as well. Uh, but what you do is you put vegetable scraps in with the rice bran and it, you let it sit for between a week or two depending on your uh, depending on your uh, weather and your temperature and some of the lactic bacteria gets released from the vegetables I mean you have salt in there as well the vegetable scraps um, end up producing the lactic bacteria that is needed to just start this bed of like bran going so that it gets you know a little bit tangy but at the same time because of the salt that's going to control the bacteria. Um, you end up having to, um, and this is pretty much the upkeep, you end up having to uh, kind of rotate the bed every day. You have to move it around so that bacteria doesn't grow on it. And so over the two weeks, you kind of look through that every day. And uh, the interesting thing about it is it really started off um, tasting kind of just like a cracker. It was like salty. It was kind of like oaty. It was a little bit, you know, like kind of like salted oat crackers. By the end of it, because there was that salt, there was that tang coming in, it just started tasting really cheesy and really good. And it is able to pickle your vegetables actually pretty quickly. And so yeah, basically today I'm just going to show you how to do this style of pickling. And if you, you know, you happen to have some bran and you can get your hands on some, uh, that's something it's, it's just like a, something new to try. So there's usually ratios that are used. So per thousand gram of bran, you need one liter of water and then you need 100 grams of salt. So. I guesstimated that we had, you know, roughly 400 and... I put 450, but actually we have about 430-esque grams. So... brain is definitely finer and then the oat bran is more coarse definitely guess is oat bran might absorb water differently than rice bran as well, but I don't know. So we'll just keep everything as if it was all rice bran.
onion. I guess um, and then these I scrubbed this really well this really well I guess we could use this part is that these vegetables as they <laughs> blend together they'll ferment um, with the rice and the oat bran so and you don't need that much I think people also put like little little sheets of kombu seaweed so I cut that up um, they didn't wash it but I always kind of want to wash it I know why they don't wash it but they, they say that there's all that MSG good flavor but it's probably what people use anyways. Okay, so well, this tub may be a bit small. We shall see. to be too much. Some people also put like shiitake mushrooms in here as well, or like dried ones, but I just thought um, <clears throat> shiitake mushrooms flavor is like just so strong and I kind of didn't want that to be in the thing. So you leave this in room temperature, uh, 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. And then every day you're just supposed to kind of flip it and turn it. And that is going to help with the lactic bacteria and maybe not the other bacteria from growing. Um, and I think depending on the weather, some people say ferment it for a week. Some people say ferment it for two weeks. So maybe it's like a smell and a taste thing. I don't know, I've never done it before. Mm. I also just had a taste of this and it's a little bit 
like salty oatmeal. So, because um, some people recommend toasting this first, some people don't. Like a lot of the Japanese channels didn't really recommend toasting it, or maybe they already are working with toasted rice bran. I don't know. So maybe if you wanted to toast it. So now what we're going to do is rotate this. So any of the material that's up on top, I want on the bottom and bottom up to the top. So and I've sanitized the spoon. I don't want to touch it too much. Let's say smell wise on day one and two, I didn't get too much of a smell. is going uh, but on day three I started getting a little bit more of a slightly sour smell and then now it's day four and I'm really starting to smell I think like the vegetables fermenting so it's a little bit definitely is more sour uh, I'm not smelling too much of the oat anymore either so so let's see so this is what I need to get on the bottom stuff I need to get back up on the top. squeezing out the air too when I do this so that you don't get this like thing of bacteria. And this rotation is supposed to help um, other mold from not growing and to help with the lactic fermentation, I guess. It's interesting because the top, I think, starts getting a little bit more sour first. you're letting this ferment for I'm just gonna go by smell and taste generally it's between one to two weeks um, on average I see it more as two weeks so they say though that every three to five days so maybe halfway through um, to replace the vegetables but who knows maybe this will ferment in in like a week because I'm keeping it right by right by kind of like the heater so it's warm. And you repeat this every day. So I'll try a bit, I'll just try a bit of this for you. There's some leftover. So day one and two, it just kind of tasted almost like a cracker. It was ground up, oatmeal and salt. That's what it tasted like. Mm. Mm. You definitely get the taste. So today is day four. You definitely get the taste of the vegetables because I, I put a pepper in there as well. So it was a little bit spicy. Um, in general, the front flavors are still just salty and a little bit oaty, I guess. Um, but then it finishes off with just a slight, I mean the tang is not there yet, so it almost just tastes like cheese. It's kind of like salty, slight tang. But yeah, days one and two when I tried it, it kind of just tasted like, like salty ground flour.
while it's lighter, it's more bubbly. So I'm just changing out some of the vegetables now. And yeah, around every five days, you wanna just replace the vegetables. This is where you lose a lot of the, the brand, so that's why you have to replace it every so often. eating these vegetables before the ones that initially were you're using to, to ferment with but because they've been in the kind of the salt brand for such a long time they're overly salty but maybe for soup or something if you needed to flavor your soup with something that's a bit more salty I guess these could work The smell now is actually, um, it's a little bit more tangy, but thanks to the peppers that we added in, it's kind of spicy, slightly tangy, um, but there's like a savory note to it because I just think because of the salt, because of everything, um, all of the vegetables that we put in, it's a savory flavor or savory smell rather. salt you need for this but when I saw Nukazuke recipes everybody rubbed a little bit of salt on their uh, vegetables first um, even though I think the bed's probably salty enough but I don't know so let me know let me know if any of you make it and if you put salt on yours first I'm just gonna rinse mine a little bit I just don't really want it that salty but I understand that maybe sometimes the salt is just to get rid of some of the liquid. Some of these bigger pieces of vegetable has definitely made the bed much wetter like I can feel it and I can also see it so probably it'd be a good idea to top up on some rice bran wheat bran oat bran at this point yeah because the cucumber had a lot of water in it oh. 
So, I think as a whole, it was a little bit salty for me and I put it into the bed for 20 hours because I thought it was going to be about a day, but I actually think that the saltiness would have been enough probably at like 8 or 10, like half the time. And so I think I'll play around with like the amount of time in there to get it, well, one slightly pickly, so slightly like acidic, and I felt like that might take more time, but then if you keep it in there too long, it gets too salty. So I would just play around with that. Um, I actually really like, the carrot is my favorite because it still has like a nice bite and a nice crunch to it. And I think because carrots are sweet, it kind of offsets some of the, the saltiness. Um, but again, putting it in maybe for a less amount of time uh, would be nice. Uh, daikon's nice. It's, mm, it's still kind of on the salty side, but I do get a nice tang to it and everything inside is cooked, but, or like, uh, tastes like it's cooked, but daikon is also like a very, can be a really harsh flavor if you don't cook it enough. And I, I kind of feel like it's a little bit harsh, so I don't know if I would try daikon again. Pickles. Um, yeah, these kind of just taste like pickles, but saltier. Um, still has a nice crunch, but again, I, I think if I took a couple hours off of this, it wouldn't be as salty and it would be a bit crunchier. So for the cabbage, still really crunchy. Actually, the cabbage is quite good, but I put the layers one on top of one another and I, I'm not sure if I spread enough of the uh, of the brand throughout it, which was kind of good because it didn't get too salty. Um, but you know, cabbage can also be quite harsh if you haven't cooked it. So it really depends on if you like kind of that like cruciferous um, type flavor. But I definitely try it with different vegetables. I've seen people do it with um, eggplant as well. So um, yeah, I think it's just, yeah, it's playing around with the salt level, but then still having it be fermenting long enough to get a little tangy and then for it to not be in there too long so that it gets too um, like soggy 